Hey, this is Connor and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd YouTube channel for another interview. Joining me today is actor Mark McKinnon. We discuss his guest roles on shows such as Blue Bloods, his new film The Available Wife and The Waiting Room, as well as being accepted into the American Black Film Festival. If you enjoy this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. So, uh, so welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this. No, I'm honored, man. I'm really honored to be here to chat it up with you. Thank you very much. And uh, so just to kind of start off, uh, so you've been an actor for a few years. You've had appearances in film and television. But I understand initially uh, football was your first passion and what prompted the change in direction? Uh, well, for me, uh, it started off when I had got accepted to Howard University. Uh, that was the mm. one for school that did not offer me a scholarship. However, right. I, knew I wanted to go there to study acting because they had a really, really good theater arts program, especially for Black actors. And mm. so when I got to audition for the theater arts program, unfortunately, they uh, was like, well, we can't have athletes in our program because the schedules don't mix. Yeah. I said, uh, well, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it happen because I want to do both. I love football, but I love acting as well. You know, so what I decided to do was to tell them, well, I'm going to put football to the side because they would not let me audition if they knew I was going to play football. So I told them I'll put football to the side, mm. most focus on acting. So I got into the program, also walked into the football team. And what happens when you have a 5 a.m. practice with the football team and it doesn't go well, they actually to come back again. Right. Day. And I already had a schedule uh, set up for, you know, a rehearsal for the theater arts program. And that's when I really started to feel that friction. So I had to make a tough decision to say, you know what? Um, you know, I, I could see myself in a longer career with acting than I would football. And even though I was good at both, like my gut told me to stick with acting. And I'm glad I made that decision. Yeah. And I guess kind of following um, that thread, uh, you've appeared on shows like Blue Bloods and uh, FBI. And I suppose... When you uh, land on a show like that, do you like, always know when you've got a few episodes behind you or is that kind of a surprise that unfolds? But can you ask that question one more time? Mr. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you get a role on like a, on a long running show like that, would you always like be told, oh, you've got like a few episodes or would that just kind of unfold where you get more as you go it, along? It, it unfolds. It unfolds even like uh, like my role in Blue Bloods. That was supposed to be one episode, you know, one scene. And then they just every year just kept bringing me back. Every time they renewed, they were like, I want to bring Mark back, you know, as Officer mm -hmm. Miller. So I'm honored. You know, they, they already uh, reached out to my team about bringing me back on for this new season they're doing. I know things have been kind of uh, like different because of COVID, but these productions yeah. are still making things happen. Yeah. And uh, another project you were in recently, uh, you played Derek Dubois in The Waiting Room. Uh, yeah. And I suppose, how did you become involved with that project? And how would you describe it to anyone who might be unfamiliar? Yeah, absolutely. So Derek Dubois in the waiting room, um, I first heard about it because I actually was in the middle of casting two other BET films because mm. BET and her and BET teamed up together to do an initiative on breast cancer awareness. Right. Um, so I was blessed with the opportunity to cast two of those films on mental health. Um, and when the team got together to start casting their uh, breast cancer one, they were looking for actors who were in the DMV area at that time, you know, to say, hey, mm. You know, we, 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 we were looking for somebody and my name came across the table and I auditioned for it, um, had a couple of callbacks. After a while, they said, look, the director loves you, the producer loves you, like we want to bring you on as Derek. And I, I was really excited because Cheryl Lee Ralph was the director, you mm -hmm. know, and that's somebody who I definitely respect. You know, her career is amazing. She did Broadway a lot, but she also did a lot of TV as well. You know, so to be able to, you know, work under somebody like her and learn from her, you know, she was amazing. Um, but BET and BET Her did a phenomenal job of having this initiative to really educate the Black community on breast cancer awareness and things that you should be doing to keep yourself healthy. So to be a part of something like that was a lot for my career because I wanted to be not only a part of entertainment, but something that will make an impact on my community. Yeah. And uh, I, I was kind of, um, I was reading a bit about the film and I saw that it was selected for the 2020 American Black Film Festival. And I suppose... What did that accomplishment mean to you and the other members of the creative team involved? Well, that one wasn't a set for the American Black Film Festival. Oh. It was my latest movie, The Available Wife. That was the oh. one that got into the Sorry. 
Yeah, no, it's okay. But even with that one, to be, you know, I I remember, I remember two years ago, but now three, um, I had went to the American Black Film Festival just to support some actor friends who were in some projects there. And when I got there, I was like, man, it would be great to one day have a project that would be an American Black Film Festival because I had a great time there. Met yeah. a lot of people that had great panel discussions. You know, so fast forward to you know two years later, where now it's like, well, I'm in the film. You know, a supporting role that like was at the film festival. I mean, unfortunately, it had to be virtual this time, so I wasn't to be in Miami like I wanted to. But you know, it was just great to be a part of something that got a lot of respect like that, and it actually won the best narrative future at the film yeah. festival. Yeah, and I guess kind of uh, speaking of the available wife, uh, so directed by Jamal Hill and starring KG Smith from Sisters. And so, what can you tell us about um, who you played in that and and the story behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So I played an executive of a multi-million dollar record label that was mm. owned by KJ Smith's character. Right. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing that because, you know, I was able to learn the music game a little bit, learn a little bit about the music business. It was good to see how, you know, we brought in music artists and I worked with Terrell Hill as well, who played one of the artists, Kingston was mm. his character's name, you know, so to be able to learn from them because, you know, they, they, these are two actors who I really look up to. And like to this day, we are friends. We keep in touch like daily. You know, so it was a really good, like, family-like atmosphere on that set. Yeah, and I suppose away from uh, acting yourself personally, you also founded the McKinnon uh, Acting Studio. And I suppose, how would you describe uh, your accomplishments since founding that? Oh, man, it was, I I'm glad I did, you know, because for one, I'm, I'm a man of purpose. Mm. You know, purpose is all about how you're helping somebody else. So to be able to use my passion of acting to be able to help other people in this field, you know, as I'm learning, they're learning, you know. And to see these people, these actors, these clients, you know, to get on some TV shows. We just had one of my clients who booked a series regular on a big HBO series, you know. So right. it's, like, it's 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 just great to see people from my area, from my town that I grew up in, making it in LA, making it in New York. You know, it's it's just it's great. Um, I learned a lot along the way, um, but there's no better feeling than knowing that somebody else is fulfilling their purpose and passion with acting because of a seed that I planted years ago. Yeah, and if I suppose if anyone who might be uh, reading or watching this wanted to find out more about your work or you personally, where could they look for that information? Yeah, absolutely. So you can check out my acting studio at McKinnonActingStudio.com. If you want to follow my personal journey, you can go to TheMarkMcKinnon.com. And I'm also on Instagram at TheMarkMcKinnon.com and I'm on Facebook as well. Yeah, that's great. And it's actually, the last question I've got for you is obviously we're still quite early into 2021, but what are you hoping to achieve or accomplish as the year continues? I mean, honestly, I'm really looking forward to uh, building my career a little bit more on TV. You know, um, mm. I had a good start in television, then got into more films, but now I really want to rebuild my career back in television again. Um, I know it's been, you know, kind of tricky because of COVID, but like I'm really looking forward to that. And also for my studio, I'm looking forward to taking it to new heights. You know, we're virtual now, but that doesn't stop the progress that we've already been making. So, you know, those are two things I'm looking forward to the most. That sounds great, for sure. Um, so I'll say thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. Oh, absolutely. I'm honored, man. Thank you again. And, you know, just to, to know that, you know, we can have this talk. It's, it's just great.